Hey guys, this is Anna. I'm on Gunpla TV today for the first time for one of these review segments. Um, as Todd mentioned before, I was really excited about this release. Back, I would say 20 years ago, I was a huge Gundam Wing fan and that's when I started building model kits. Not that I have gotten any better, but um, this was a really cool opportunity to kind of revisit my roots for the things that got me interested in working at Hobby Link Japan and building kits. So today, as you know, as you can already tell, we are looking at this guy. The Sandrock. This is Katra Roberba winner's mobile suit, well, Gundam, not mobile suit, from the original Gundam Wing uh, animated series. There is a different version for Endless Waltz, which we've actually seen way more kits for. So this was um, a really exciting opportunity to build one of the originals. So let's uh, have a little bit of background about this kit first. So Katra was the pilot. He was the Middle Eastern a uh, pilot who was related to the Maganat Corps. I know I'm going to completely mispronounce that. And as you probably already know, Gundam Wing was aired in the US in 2000 as the first serialized Gundam show that was really put on main primetime TV. Um, it was right after kids got out of school, so everyone was watching it. Um, and in a time where anime was really limited on television in the US, it was a big deal. Even though it came out five years prior in Japan, it took him five years to bring it to the US. So this particular Gundam, the Sandrock, was intended for desert combat, and it has tough anti-dust joints and armor. That's for the Gundam specification. You can't really necessarily see this in the kit itself. Um, let's get a little bit of a closer look at this guy. I really like the shotels. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but they're pretty cool. Um, that's the weapon right here, you can see. The uh, shotels, and right now I have it posed in the Cross Crusher, I believe is the name of that weapon. And basically this is the weapon that can cut other mobile suits clean in half, um, like a pincer. It's really neat. This Gundam, the Sandrock, has the strongest armor and the highest power output of the five main Gundams from the series. It was a beast, but it is a short-range attacker. It has a couple of weak long-range weapons. And we can see those on the kit a little bit. They're very tiny, right up here on the head, on the sides by the eyes. My finger looks huge in this shot. Um, these right here are the Vulcan guns, I believe. I am probably pronouncing that wrong. Um, and also on the shoulders, we have homing missile launchers, and they don't look like much on the kit, but that's what they are on the actual Gundam. So his main weapon are the shuttles which um, can be heat shotels, especially in the kit with these special parts that are made with clear red. They're really sharp looking, they're really neat. Um, so you can just completely replace those. So you have multiple configurations that you can uh, use this kit, you can use to display this kit. The backpack is actually right here in the cross crusher mode, but you can move it back to the back of course, or to the opposite arm, and that's kind of, um, not, it's not usually shown on the right arm, so I like to keep it on the left here. You can move the shield by itself to his arm on either side, and then the shuttles, of course, mount on the backpack when not in use and just stay on the back and they have this really cool shape. Um, and there are many scenes in the anime where you can see Katra pulling them out just straight over his shoulders, um, and that's something that I haven't checked to see if this kit can actually accomplish pose-wise. But I would be really impressed if it can. So if you guys have bought this kit or if you buy it and build it later, let us know in the comments if it can actually achieve that pose because I think that would be really cool if Bandai went that extra mile. So um, something that's kind of special about this kit is that Bandai really hasn't released a lot of this base kit, um, just the base Sandrock, not Sandrock Custom, which they have several more kits for. And the last actual standard Sandrock kit didn't, hasn't, um, it was released in, I want to say 2000. It was a long time ago. And since then, they've put out a couple of MGs for the Endless Waltz, the custom version. But this base version just got no love for a long time. Um, my first kit ever was the Endless Waltz version of the Sandrock custom. Oh, which is different. There's a lot of blue in the kit, um, and I was kind of bummed back then because I wanted a complete set of the original style Gundams, and I could not find Sandrock in this version. So this HG is just really cool for me. It has really great proportions um, compared to even just looking at the box art of some of the old kits. 
maybe Dave can show us some of that on here. Um, they are just really kind of disappointing, but you know, that was the technology we had back then on kits. This guy is just, it looks really great. I do think the legs look kind of exaggerated, but I think that's kind of true for most Gunpla and probably necessary to keep the balance. Um, so if we want to talk about articulation and gimmicks a little bit, we already went over the weapon gimmicks, but um, the articulation on this kit is pretty good. If we start at the head, we've got a complete ball joint up here and it looks a little bit lacking. You can't really get the head down any farther than this. It's, you can just completely see the poly cap and I think that's kind of, oof, um, myself. But if you have the head down or turned, it's a little bit harder to see in there. Um, so he's got a pretty wide range of motion, except if you want to turn it to the side, then you can start running into the, the homing missile and that's a little bit disappointing. You have to be really careful when you're posing that you don't just ram it into the, the side of the homing missile. But other than that, most of the, the articulation on this kit is great. We've got full, a full range of motion in the shoulders, so you can pivot the arms completely around. You can pop them off really easily for painting, um, but they are pretty firm, so they're not just going to fall off on their own. Um, we've got the elbow, we've got another joint under the shoulder, and these are just basic hinges. And then of course the hands move 360 degrees, and we have additional hand parts, open hands, um, thumbs out grasping hands, and the fists that can hold the shoulders. Uh, moving on from there, we've got some nice waist articulation. It just spins around and you can lean him forward and backward just a little bit. It's, um, it's enough to get some good poses, but it's not a huge range. The skirt, the flaps on the skirt are all movable. These are actually attached as a single piece, so they move together, but all the other flaps are independent and move on their own. You can even move the back one up really far, actually. I don't know when you would need to do that, but it works. Um, the legs also have some great articulation. The feet, I was kind of impressed with this. You've got a hinge right here and on the ankle and on the cover. So you've got three hinges right here on the foot, so you can get some pretty cool poses. This may be normal for an HG. I'm not super familiar with HGs, so forgive me if I don't know. Um, but I imagine you can get some cool, like, in-flight space action <laughs> poses with the, um, the action bases um, with the feet shaped like this, because you can't really pose him standing up like this. Um, of course, so ankle, knee, those are just hinges. And we've also got quite a bit of articulation at the thigh up here. This guy spins all the way around, but it gets really loose when you do. And that's the one bummer. The legs get really loose at the thighs and tend to fall out if you twist them around too much. So be careful with them uh, when you're posing. It's just kind of an annoyance. It's not a huge flaw. So there's that at least. Um, I know a lot of people have brought up the cloak, the cloak, the diffusing cloak. And as much as I'm disappointed that we didn't get that in this kit, that's mainly um, an Endless Waltz bonus. I don't believe that Sandrock ever actually shows up in the base series with that cloak on. Um, so disappointing, but also kind of understandable, but we can hope that they make a new Endless Waltz kit. Maybe we'll get an HG someday. It's been a long time since they've done an Endless Waltz Sandrock HG. They've been MGs for a long time. Um, so that's pretty much the articulation, the gimmicks, the weapons. It's got really limited weapons, um, even for an HG kit, but I think Bandai kind of, I mean, they were accurate to this show, so you can't really do much more. He does have, forgive me for not knowing the name of it, but uh, some kind of uh, beam machine gun kind of weapon in Endless Waltz that they could have included, but because it's not really canon, it makes sense not to have it. So instead, we just got two versions of the Shotels, including um, what you'd call the Heat Shotel, where they heat up super hot and make it way easier to cut through mobile suits like butter. So that's about it for the kit itself. Uh, overall, it was a pretty easy build. I'm not really used to building HGs, but I do build a bunch of other non-Bandai kits. I guess something that stood out on this was the way that the runners were set up. I didn't really see any undergating, but despite that, 
a lot of the gating was right on the edges. So of course, you know, you have to sand them down in a lot of cases to get the pieces to fit flush. But at the same time, it prevents a lot of scarring on the surface of the kit. One of the disappointing areas in regards to that are the forearms. You can see you've got nub marks right here and I had a really hard time trying to sand those. If you're handy with sandpaper, go to town. But if you're not, I can completely understand because I sanded them and you can just, they uh, are not looking too good. But the rest of the kit, the gating was pretty good and the nubs were really easy to get off and just with a little bit of sanding, we got them out of the way. Um, one more thing we can look at is the instructions. So here's the instruction manual for the Gundam Sandrock. Um, it's pretty nice. A lot of it is in color, as you can see, but that's mostly when you get to it being completed and are working on the weapons. The boring stuff is in black and white. <laughs> um, the legs, the torso, the basic build parts. And um, that makes sense. They're saving a little bit of money. Um, and it's not too hard to figure out without color. You don't really need it. There's some fancy stuff on the back. There is a paint guide on the back. I don't know what company they're referring to with the paints. They may not be speaking about an actual paint brand because I don't believe Bandai makes its own paints. So you can probably just wing this with um, a generic paint brand. If you're looking at these colors, they're all pretty standard red, green, yellow, nothing too out of the ordinary. So you should be able to do this fine. Um, and if you have Gundam markers, even more easily. So now that I've completely messed up my lovely pose and have them looking a little bit awkward and uh, knees out here. Anyway, that was the Gundam Sandrock. This is one of the poses you can accomplish if this is something that you want to accomplish. I hope you guys have enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments on our YouTube video, on our Hobby Link TV video, video the blog post. Let me know about your memories of the Gundam Wing, um, if you've ordered this kit. I want to see your customizations. I want to see everything because I am a big fan of this one and it was a pretty exciting build for me. So um, until next time guys, thanks for tuning in.